Hey guys, this time I'm going to show you how to remove the camshafts and the cylinder head. Okay, so last time we got the engine out of the bike. Now we need to open it up and find the problem and hopefully fix it. To set expectations, recall that my dealership quote said it would be nine and a half hours to replace the crank. Assuming they get the engine out in about an hour and they have to spend about an hour to install it back, that means it takes at least seven to eight hours for a factory trained and well equipped technician to pull apart the engine and put it back together again. This is not for the faint of heart. Seeing as I believe the problem is with the crankshaft and our rod bearings, I need to separate the crank case to get to those parts. To do that, I need to remove the camshaft and cylinder head. I started by slapping together a quick little stand so the motor will stand up straight and be more stable while I'm working on it. Not required, but highly recommended. Okay, back to the engine disassembly. The camshafts sit on top of the cylinder head. We'll start by removing the cylinder head cover by removing the two 10mm bolts and then just pulling it off along with the gasket. With the cover off, we can see the camshafts. To free them, the first step is to move the piston to top dead center of the compression stroke. To do this, we need to rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise. Honda thoughtfully included this large aluminum access port to a 17mm drive feature that can be used to turn the crank. Turn the crank slowly. The amount of resistance will change depending on where the piston is in the stroke. To find top dead center, make sure the outside index lines in and EX on the cam sprockets are flush with the cylinder head top surface and facing outward. If the crank isn't turning, it's probably because you're still in gear and you need to switch into neutral. You can do this by pulling on the clutch and using pliers to rotate the gear shifter up or down as needed. With the piston at top dead center, we can now remove the cam chain tensioner lifter plug and o-ring. This gives access to a little flathead feature that puts tension on the timing chain. We need to turn this all the way clockwise to release the tension on the chain. Do this with a very small flathead screwdriver and hold it in place with a vice grip. Now that we've released the tension on the chain, we can remove the two 5mm hex bolts holding down the cam chain guide at the top, and be careful to avoid dropping the bolts into the crankcase. Next, we need to remove the eight 10 mm bolts holding down the camshaft holders. Start at the outside and move towards the inside, loosening in a crisscross pattern in several steps. Keep track of which bolt goes where because they're not all the same length. Also, note that these bolts only provide clamping force. They do not enforce the position of the camshaft holders. The holders are located by dowel pins. So when you pull the holders away from the cylinder head, lift straight up. On mine, the holder closest to the chain was rather difficult to pull off, so I reinstalled the valve cover bolts onto those bosses, which gave me a little extra grip and leverage, and it came out eventually. With the cam holders out of the way, we can remove the cam shafts by removing the cam chain from the cam sprockets. I was having trouble getting the chain free of the sprockets at first, but eventually figured out that if I tip both cams toward the sprockets and fiddle a bit, the chain comes right off. Let's do a brief visual inspection. The lobe surfaces should be shiny and smooth, no scoring or evidence of insufficient lubricant. The cam sprocket teeth should not be worn, scratched, or chipped. And the height of the inlet cam lobe should be 1.2170 inches and the exhaust lobe should be 1.2133 inches. I don't have tools to measure accurately to four decimals, but this Harbor Freight dial caliper is the best I have and it looks like I'm pretty close to where I'm supposed to be. The journal surfaces should not have any evidence of wear or damage. There isn't a specified diameter, only a specified clearance. We'll inspect this using plastic gauge during the reinstallation process. Next up, we need to grab the shims. I found that these come out best with a magnet, which also serves to prevent them from falling down into the crankcase. Keep track of where each one comes from. These are precision ground hardened steel, and at reassembly, they'll need to go back to their original positions. 
With the cams out of the way, we can remove the two 10 millimeter cylinder head bolts and the four 14 millimeter nuts and washers. These are on tight. To get enough leverage, I scooted my engine stand to the edge of the workbench and used two quick clamps to hold it down. Worked great. Anyhow, be careful with the fasteners so they don't fall into the crankcase, especially the nuts and washers on the chain side of the block. A magnet works really well for grabbing the fasteners and won't get stuck on the aluminum block as you're poking it in there. Now that the fasteners have been removed, the only thing holding the cylinder in place is the gasket. It may be stuck pretty hard, but just be patient. Wriggle back and forth, don't whack the cylinder head too hard, and definitely don't try to pry it with a screwdriver. Well, that's a pretty good stopping point for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.